Hi guys, happy Thursday and welcome to my video today while I'm working from home to share an uh, amazing case actually that we treated. This case is a teen who presented in our practice in CCC Smiles in Mossman and he is a, a child actor. And he was very, very conscious of his missing upper laterals. So one, two, and two, two were missing. And a general dentist had kind of done some like bond ups for him just so he could, you know, go to auditions and continue his career while um, a, an orthodontic treatment um, or a final treatment plan was decided whether we do implants for the missing laterals or whether we do substitution by natural teeth. So mesialization of the canines, then recontouring and reshaping of the upper canines to mimic the upper lateral incisors that are missing. Um, and how we manage it all in a really, really fast fashion with Invisalign plus dental monitoring, weekly tracking. And I really want to share this case with you to highlight um, what I've learned. And hopefully um, you guys will learn from this and the power of clear aligners, okay? Um, uh, so what I want to share here is I'm going to actually play the PowerPoint and you're going to actually see it um, from here on. So this kid um, is about 12 or so years old when he presents to me. You can see he's a mild class two facially and skeletally. He's mesofacial. Uh, when you look at his occlusion and his arch forms, they're a bit narrow and tapering, but there's no crossbite. He's got a um, class two subdivision. So, you know, um, one side is a bit more class two than the other, but overall he's got a class two buccal occlusion. And that makes sense, right? Because his upper laterals are missing. So there has been some natural movement of the one, three and two, three, the upper canines as they were erupting. Um, however, because of these, um, I mean, these kind of temporary bond ups on his one, two to two, two, um, they kind of were obstructed actually from closing space. So he's got an overjet of about three millimeters, a quite a traumatic dental deep bite, class two molars, class two canines. Um, so our treatment objectives were actually, we discussed this treatment a lot in length, whether we should open space, do implants, whether we should do natural substitution. Um, but the biggest consideration was not the final treatment, but how we're we going to cope with um, a, a really, really um, a, a media front personality who's constantly in shows and uh, major TV serials and actually be able to continue his acting career while all this was happening for him and not get, um, you know, any issues with his auditions. Okay, so that was really important to this, this kid. So uh, we decided to close space naturally by um, mesialization of upper canines. Um, and we had some treatment objectives. We thought the treatment time would be 18 to 20 months. If you look at his initial x-ray, you can see those dodgy, I don't say dodgy, sorry, in that loose sense. But what I mean is they just don't look great, okay? You've got these really, really funny bond ups that I don't like. If anything, they're obstructing the canines that were erupting from naturally closing the spaces, okay? And you can see that uh, the one three is almost about to come in the right position, but, so the upper right canine, but it's been obstructed by these little bond ups. Um, and the two three is now being also obstructed from coming forward. So the first thing we had to do was get rid of these bond ups ASAP. And even when we got rid of these bond ups from on the upper incisors, we actually had to provide this kid with a temporary denture with painted teeth, like a, not a denture, but a temporary um, Essex type retainer. And we painted the teeth so that he could still continue his auditions while we're waiting for his clear aligners to be manufactured. So we kind of built a lot of... Um, different types of movements and this is a, a, a neat chart from Invisalign that shows where are the movements that were moderately advanced and you can see the lower molars I'm trying to do something here that Invisalign's alerting me hey these are difficult movements okay so why they were difficult because we were trying to extrude his lower molars a lot more 
Um, and that's because we wanted some deep bite correction. He's a growing child. In a growing child, you get some dental alveolus um, uh, growth and extrusion. So it's a lot easier to correct deep bites, okay? So let's run his, his very first clean check that we got from Invisalign. Um, and what we're planning to do here, so from the frontal, you can see the bond ups are gone. We're slowly, slowly, slowly reducing them. And we're actually bringing the canines in. Now, he could not have any anterior attachments. So we place them palatally. Okay, so the, the upper canines actually have attachments on his uh, lingual surfaces, the palatal surfaces of those teeth. So let's watch it again. You can see we also are trying to get some sort of interarch elastics. You see hooks on the lower canines. Um, and that is, again, to assist our mesialization of his upper arch, okay? So, and deep bite correction at the same time. So when we go to the next side video, again, what we're doing is we've got a painted pontic, you know, his upper left lateral um, so that he continued his auditions. You can see on mass mesialization of quadrant one and quadrant two. You can see a lot of extrusion of quadrant three and quadrant four posteriorly and some amount of intrusion of the lower anterior region. Okay, so will, will it be absolute intrusion? No, it's all relative. And during growth, what you're going to see is actually a really fantastic, easy way to correct deep bite. Okay, so it's all done with relative intrusion of the anteriors and a lot more uh, uh, sorry extrusion of the posteriors. Now, here's my favorite attachments. If you're building, do not rely on Invisalign optimized attachments for extrusion. Biggest tip you can learn from these, get rid of them. If you want deep bite correction, you must get these horizontal, conventional, at least three millimeter wide attachments. And the more extrusion you build, the bigger I want these attachments. Okay, do not rely on Invisalign's optimize their crap. Throw them out. Okay, so here we go. This is this kid six months in treatment, right? You can see here the palatal attachment on the upper canine, on this canine. We still have this canine, still a bit rotated. Um, you can see he's got buttons here, okay, buttons here. We're running some class three elastics. Why? Because it allows upper arch to mesialize and a tiny bit of retraction to lower. But again, you know, we don't need heavy. We've done some nice expansion for him. Um, we're still not there yet because the 1, 3, 2, 3 are quite pointy, right? They don't mimic lateral incisors. So six months in treatment, I'm quite happy with the positions of the canines for now. And um, what I really want to do is get some uh, temporary bond ups done up quickly for this child to mimic those upper canines as laterals. Once they're mimicked as laterals, I can design my smile all around that, okay? And later on in life, you'll probably choose to replace them with porcelain. But for now, we are doing composite buildups. And again, later on in life, we might do some gingival contouring and things like that. One of the key things about doing a missing lateral case, and Marco Rosa, a fantastic orthodontist, um, I love his lectures on it. He talks about it, that we must intrude the canines a little bit, okay, because canines have this big prominence. You also must put some extra palatal... Uh, root movement because canines tend to be really bulky teeth that have this big um, convexity or like root prominence and if we're going to make them mimic laterals we need to what we need to do tuck the roots a bit palatally for the upper canines and also you want to intrude the upper premolars slightly because you can build them up to mimic canines because now the upper premolars are going to become canines right so um, there's a fine art to it and Marco Ross's papers really describe and even um, um, Vince Kokic, his papers on missing upper laterals really talk very nicely about how we can really perfect these kids um, and smile and save them having two long-term implants, you know, lifetime maintenance. So here he is. He goes to his dentist. They do again um, build-ups on his upper canines. Now they're looking a bit like laterals. They're not perfect. They're still a bit, you know, wide, I think. I don't really like them. But they're temporary, you know, just for us to get by. Uh, remember, this kid is an acting professional, so we need to also make sure aesthetically everything is good. Um, but I also want you to note something, okay? Look at the deep bite correction. This is six months in treatment, okay? Look at his initial deep bite. Look at his initial deep bite right there, 
Okay, it's almost 100% traumatic overbite, six months in treatment, okay, wonderful deep biting, uh, sorry, di uh, bite opening, so sorry, <laughs> six months in treatment, wonderful bite opening, okay, if anything, I reckon what we need here, you can see we expanded his upper molars a lot, so the 1626, the upper first molars, they need a bit more buckle root torque now because they just look, uh, you know, we kind of push them laterally a bit. So they kind of, mo you know, moved and hinged a tiny bit and the palatal cusp dropped. So we just want to now get this right in our next revision, right? So the deep bite is there. Midlines are coincident. I mean, this is six months. So there's a lot of fallacies out there that clear aligners are not good at deep bite correction. I can tell you they're fantastic in deep bite correction. If you know the right philosophy, if you know the right biological movements, if you really understand profits equilibrium theory, um, facial growth, you must read papers uh, on facial growth, okay, and understand how much growth is to occur. Uh, Bjork studies on tantalum implants are classic material for you to understand. Facial growth is the most important thing you're going to ever, ever learn when it comes to orthodontics. And you really must know it very deeply if you want to do good orthodontics. Okay, so here we are, deep bites corrected. Uh, we're just going to now, you know, he's got nice expansion. We're six months in treatment, fantastically fast result, no emergencies, no breakages. You know, the kid's going to L.A., he's doing auditions, he's flying back and forth from Sydney to other countries. Um, we're, we're virtually tracking him with dental monitoring. So now we're just kind of finishing his smile, right, when most of our work is done. So this is him 10 months in treatment, and you can see that midlines are still almost coincident. <coughs> I'm sorry, we still have the, the upper molars. They're not really perfect. In fact, you know, we still need to get them a little bit better. We need to get the occlusion, occlusion on those upper molars really spot on, right? So we've still got a bit more revision to go, but anterior is looking fantastic. Um, you know, the premolars also need a bit of work, upper premolars. We've intruded them a little bit. We could perhaps intrude them a bit more to mimic them like canines. So these are different stages, right? So the dentist, like the dentist and I are working together continuously to say now it's time for this now it's time for this and every time we pause his treatment to kind of go into restorative phase we've got to provide him some sort of um, temporary retainer or a painted um, uh, uh, Essex type retainer so he can continue his auditions so um, you know this is 10 months in treatment we take an OPG to look at root par parallelism and you can see the 1, 3, 2, 3 are not far off, the upper canines. We just need to add a tiny bit of mesial root tip, okay? Not really too bad. The, all the other teeth are looking pretty good, okay? So just a tiny bit more mesial root tip, and uh, this kid's done. Now, during COVID, this entire treatment was able to be tracked um, through an online app. And when he's going to come back next time when I can see hey, this kid, we will be working on those final touches, getting the 1626 socked in into the occlusion. Uh, so perhaps some amount of extrusion of the sixes will be built into the next clincheck and a tiny bit of intrusion of the upper premolars. So the dentist can now go and mimic them and make them look like canines, okay? So thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this case and I just wanted to share how um, you know, so much is possible with clear liners and a very efficient, very predictable way and in a very comfortable and um, uh, virtual way for the patient as well. OK, this is not just about us. Uh, we need to really, really get our game up to have higher predictability in a very efficient manner that suits the patient's lifestyle. OK, this is about the patient it's not always about us. So I choose clear liners as my first choice because my patients want it. They love it. They demand it. So I have to learn to get good at it. And, um, and you know, I've spent a lot of time, a lot of understanding, um, a lot of cases, a lot of experience to really, really dig into what is possible. And I think 99% is possible without fixed appliances if you know how to use aligners.
Okay, guys, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Ask me any comments you want, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you one day um, and seeing you at one of our boss courses. We run a postgrad diploma in digital orthodontics, and if you like, you can just go on our website and register your interest and, um, you know, really understand what we're trying to teach, how we're trying to teach. Uh, risk management is very important to me, um, so we will teach you a lot of risk management, actually. And... Um, Thank you for watching and uh, enjoy. Bye. Have a great weekend too. Bye.